What's the difference between a new trader and a professional trader? This is a question we get asked quite frequently. Of course there are many differences but the main difference is this. New traders think about how much money they can make while professional traders think about how much money they can lose. Now think about that for a moment. These are two opposite attitudes. At first you may wonder how a trader can make any money when they're focusing on a potential loss. But the professional trader knows that one of the keys to winning is learning how to lose gracefully. Why? One of the most consistent realities in trading is that if you trade long enough, at some point in time you will likely have losing trades. But how you manage those losses has as much to do with your long-term success or failure as just about any other factor in trading. When we enter into a trade, we need to be okay with taking on a loss. We don't have to like it, but it's best to accept losses as a real component to trading. Therefore, it's important to identify and manage your risk effectively. We argue that the potential to be consistently profitable increases with the use of protective stops, which helps get you out of a trade when the market moves against you. Emotions can run very strong when your trades turn into losers. That's why we feel the first step before entering into a trade is to determine when you're going to get out of the market. If you use a wait and see approach to trading, you put yourself in a position to let your emotions take over your decision making process. Traders who do not identify their risk before entering into the trade can quite often go through the three stages of getting the dreaded margin call. First comes hope. You hope the market comes back from a losing trade to a winning trade. But when hope doesn't work, you try wishing. You wish the market will come back enough to get out at the price where you got in so you don't have to take a loss. And then comes desperation where you just watch as the market continues to move against you and eventually the margin watcher feature gets you out with a big loss. So what went wrong? It's hard to make good decisions in the heat of the battle. If you have real money on the line, you tend to make decisions based on fear or greed. We need to make decisions based on sound analysis rather than the need to just get out of a trade. How many times have you finally gotten out of a bad trade? and then see the market reverse and move back in the direction you wanted. It's happened to all of us, but those who decide not to let this happen to them anymore take a big step to becoming a better trader. So, determine your entry, identify your risk, and project your potential profit again and again and again. Now, think about tossing a coin for a moment. When we toss a coin and choose heads or tails, we have a 50% chance of being correct. But what if we win $1 when we're right and lose $1 when we're wrong? Basically, we're putting ourselves in a position to be break even. So to become profitable, one of two things needs to happen. We need to win a higher percentage of the coin tosses, or we need to win more when we're right than we lose when we're wrong. Most traders prefer to win more when they're right than to lose when they're wrong. Now, what if we win $2 on that coin toss when we're right and lose $1 when we're wrong? The answer is, of course, that we would more likely be consistently profitable. I'd want to toss that coin 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, since I have the numbers on my side. Remember, again, it's a 50-50 coin toss. Even if I lost 5 coin tosses in a row, I would want to take that 6th toss as a trading opportunity. And why not? There's nothing wrong with the coin or with what I was doing, so I'd remain consistent in my approach. Profitable traders take a similar position, knowing that there's no guarantee that any one trade will be profitable. They therefore detach themselves from the outcome of any one trade, but they know that after a series of trades, chances are good that they will be profitable. Whether it's a series of 10 trades, one month of trades, or a quarter or a year of trading, they know they have been profitable in the past, and since they're using the same approach, the chances are good that they will be profitable in the future. This is their strength. It's easy to keep your emotions out of your trading when you treat trading as a business rather than a source of entertainment. So be consistent in your approach and how you handle losses, as this is one thing that makes a good trader. Let's continue with the coin toss analogy. We should think about winning half of our trades. It's true, some new traders find a way to win 75% of their trades or more, but the problem is that they win a little while risking a lot. We've seen a new trader win 10 pips on a trade, then win another trade with 10 pip profit, then perhaps even one more. 
but when they try to win 10 pips on the fourth trade, the market does not behave and they may end up losing 50 pips on the trade in an effort to win 10 pips. This happens way too often, as the trader wins 3 out of 4 trades or something along those lines, but still manages to lose 20 pips on the series of trades, and this obviously won't work. But what does work? I hope you already have something similar to the answer. The answer is to win $2 when we're right for every $1 that we're wrong. This is simply the classic 1 to 2 risk reward ratio. We risk $1 and look for $2 in profit or more. Or we risk 100 pips when we're looking for 200 pips or more in profit. We want to try to win 50% of our trades and make more when we're right than we lose when we're wrong. This is achievable even for new traders. But you have to accept it and use it in your approach to trading for it to work for you. Now another good question to ask is what if the market reverses just before hitting your profit target? There may be nothing more frustrating than seeing the market move up to within a few pips of your target only to see it reverse and move back to stop you out with a loss. So let's not let that happen. We recommend moving your protective stop to break even once the market moves halfway to your target. Here's an example. Let's say you buy the euro dollar at 145 even. You place your protective sell stop at 144 even for a risk of 100 pips. You place your limit order to take profits at 147 for a potential gain of 200 pips, so we have a 1 to 2 risk reward ratio. When or if the market moves halfway to your target, which would be the 146 level, you can move your stop from 144 up to the entry of 145. This means that at this point, you can break even or profit 200 pips on the trade, which is a nice position to be in. The other main point of money management is how you manage your account. So a good question to ask yourself before entering into a trade is how many lots should I open? To get a better understanding of how to determine this, consider the following. Let's assume you have a $5,000 account balance and you place a 25 lot trade on the euro dollar. That's 250,000 units which means your cost per pip is $25. Let's assume you've prepared for a 100 pip loss on this trade. A 100 pip loss at $25 per pip comes out to be $2,500. With a $5,000 account balance, it doesn't make much sense to open 25 lots and risk half of your account balance on a single trade, does it? Remember the coin toss. What if we were to lose 5 trades in a row in spite of a long term 50% win ratio on our trades? The problem of course is that we could run out of money before winning another trade. So we want to risk a limited number of pips and a limited amount of our account balance so we can continue trading even after a few losses. We recommend not risking any more than 5% of your account balance at any one time. To get a better feel for calculating your trade sizes so that you can achieve this goal, let's go through some calculations together. First, 5% of $5,000 is $250. To make sure that you don't risk more than 5% of your account, you want to risk no more than $250 at any one time. To do this, you'll need to follow two steps. The first step is to determine your stop on the trade. Let's again assume you're willing to risk 100 pips on a particular trade. Next, you'll need to find out the pip cost per 10k lot for the pair you're trading. You can view the per lot pip cost from the pip cost column within the simple dealing rates window of the platform. For this example, let's assume we're trading the dollar yen, which has a per lot pip cost of about $1.10. If we multiply that by the 100 pip stop loss, we get a dollar loss of $110. So, so far, so good. But what if we double our trade size from one lot to two lots? That would mean our pip cost doubles and goes from $1.10 per pip to $2.20 per pip. So 100 pip loss trading two lots would be $220, still under the $250 maximum that we have. But what about three lots? With three lots, our pip cost goes up to $3.30, multiplied by the 100 pip loss, and we get $330, which is more than the $250, or 5% of our account. So at a maximum, we'll want to trade two lots on this particular trade to stay within these parameters. I have to take a moment to strongly emphasize something here. 
Notice that our recommendation was not to risk more than 5% of your account balance at any one time. This does not mean that you can open five trades, each risking 5%. That's a risk of 25%, not 5%. You'll often find that there are many good trading opportunities available at the same time, but depending on the amount of capital you have available to you, and the risk that each trade has associated with it, you might not be able to act on all of them. Patience and consistency are key. And remember, a missed trade today will likely bring with it another trading opportunity tomorrow. 